I was born in the Mideast to a Muslim Sunni family, 14 brothers and sisters. The best part in my house was is the teaching that my mother and my dad taught me from my childhood. For example, the Quran taught us. It says, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلَ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرٍ يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلَ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَى You know, and it says, whoever does little or great of sin or good, he will see it in his lifetime. So therefore, we knew from our childhood that it's the work that you do for Allah is your work that makes place for you. I came to understand what Islam is all about and I fell more in love with Allah like never before. And I became a firm believer that my life is to evangelize the world and to make the world, Islamic world, specifically the Christian and Jews. Now I have the Quran in my right hand, I can change the world. Now I'm on a mission. The greatest thing you can do as a Muslim is to bring Jews and Christians to Islam, to literally Islamize them. This is what my heart desire. Anytime I brought a Christian or a Jew to become Muslim, it was a day of celebration. I had this little car that had teat up, and I was driving, you know, from one place to another. I had an accident. I ejected out of my car, broke the seat belt off, flew off the tree top, and I fell in a mud hole on my neck, broke my neck in two places. And I cried out, Allah, where are you? Nothing happened that day. Out of the car wreck, this, came, this gentleman came and he said, word for word, he said, my brother is chasing the other car that caused the wreck. I called the ambulance and it's on the way and I'm here, I will stay with you and everything's going to be all right. This man kept assuring me everything's going to be all right. And as I looked into his face, he had that smile, comforting smile on his face. And I'm going, what is he smiling about? And uh, I was angry because he kept smiling only for him to kneel down, take his shirt off, clean my face from the mud and kept assuring me everything's going to be all right and we're going to take care of you. He kept referring to that. Ambulance came, took me to the hospital. This surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, was in the ER waiting for me. The surgeon almost did the same thing. He read my chart and he said, you don't have insurance, you don't have this and that, but guess what? We're going to take care of you and everything's going to be all right. And when he said that, I looked into his face and I saw that same comforting smile that the other person had and I'm going like the demon must have found me these people know who I am because they mocking me with their smile I was really scared two days later I wake up in a hospital the third person is a doctor head of physical therapy came and did the same exact things and he said everything word for word we're gonna take care of you and everything's gonna be all right and when I looked in his face, that smile was in his face, on his face. And I knew that it's a matter of time before the enemy had me, you know, I'm dead. The day when the, uh, the first man came to visit me, the one who encountered me on the street, and the doctor who met me in the ER room, and uh, the third doctor came, and now they're arguing among themselves who has told who about me first. That day, they start hugging each other and telling each other, I love you. And in my mind, in my heart, I thought to myself, no, they're Christians. They're not just Christians, but they're the huggy, touchy, feely Christians. And their action, even before they spoke about Christianity, spoke to me that they were Christians because the way they're telling each other, I love you and bless you, so it was very evident to me that the life that they lived, it's the life that they walked and talked. They told me, Kamal, your bills are so high. We, you can't afford to stay in the hospital anymore. We're going to have to take you to our home to take care of you. And now they're fighting who's going to take me home. One of them won because his wife was a head nurse at one time. They took me to their home, put me in there best room in the house and as I arrived three little kids ran and jumped to the bed and start 
calling me uncle come on uncle come on and um my anger i'm telling them don't call me uncle come on i am not your uncle and now these little kids put their little hand on me and started doing the jesus prayer i was trained to fight anything in life to take down any big giant but those little loving hand that laid touched my hand melted my heart you know and they started doing the jesus prayer and i thought to myself to myself if these people know what i do if these people know who i am and these people did not and so therefore there was a war inside of me these men would come once a week will make a hole uh, will make a circle around me and they put me in the middle and they pray that god may heal me that god may bless me that god may light shine his face up on me that god can bless me and they doing this in the name of jesus and my anger was raging but i came to understand that these people are loving people they never told me come all you're muslim and you're not going to go to heaven you're a muslim and you deserve to go to hell you're a muslim and you should be killed for your faith or your head should be taken off in fact they set the example they became the living word that walked and now they're walking in front of me and showing me their heart now i came to this understanding that these people are not the bad people that i thought that they are because when i was a child i used to go right on their door on the christian door ghayru marghubi bikum you are not accepted get out of our city we coming to get you now i'm going like these people are sheep ready to be slaughtered they have no idea what's coming about to get them and all of a sudden these people put their heart right there basket was put every once a week right in the middle and everybody put their money and paid the bills completely off they forgave me my bills i'm going what kind of people will forgive me my bills without knowing who i am one day the doctor i'm staying at his house he said come on you're free to go home you can walk right now now bear in mind i'm still in braces my neck is braced my hip my legs and he said you can move and we're going to stand with you until you get on your feet we're going to make sure everything's all right so they did not just assure me they came you know they made sure that i am taken care of so i went to my little place that i lived in and uh, the first thing i did just like a good muslim boy i fell on my knees and i put my hands to the heaven and i cried out allah rabbi wa maulai my lord and my king why did you let such a thing happen to me allah i loved you with everything that there is within me many time i almost died for you allah these people have relationship with their god i want to have relationship with you too i want to hear you saying that you love me i want to know i want to know you if you are real speak to me allah i want to know you well that day nothing happened now bear in mind these men and women they pray for healing and receive healing they pray for breakthrough they receive breakthrough they pray and ask and they i hear them saying i heard god said this and this i'm going i want to have that relationship if this is real i want to have it because i've been worshiping allah all days of my life and i earned it and when i did not hear the voice of god the voice of allah that day i came to my understanding to know that everything that i've done in my life is really nil and effective that this warring things this is all by the work of my hand that's what i really want to do i was trained from my childhood and i'm following a path that i didn't know better that's the only path that i'm going to go through and uh i really came to the place i thought i would never walk again or move again as normal men because of the severity of the car wreck and with this i want to grab one of my best gun put it in the right place and call it over with.
because I came to confusion not knowing what is real anymore. You know, is the giant of Islam is true or is this Christianity is true? Although I hear these people saying this and I learned everything from Islam here and Islam said this and this, but I never seen any fruit from here. But these people tell me about the fruit that they seen and I, I didn't see it for myself. There's nothing tangible to me anymore. And with this, as I went over there to grab the gun, I heard a voice. The voice was so keen and real and assuring. The voice was deeper and better than my father's voice. That my father and my mother that knew me from my childhood. That voice is the voice that like, I've known even in the depth of Kamal himself. And he said, Kamal, Kamal. And I, the minute I heard it, I fell on my knees and I put my hand up to the heavens and I cried out with everything that within me. God, the Father Abraham, if you are real, would you speak to me? God, the Father Abraham, if you are real, I want to know you. That's all I have to say. It was that little invitation that God the Father Abraham came to Rome. And a room was filled with his glory. And I said, Who are you, my Lord? He said, I am that I am. I said, What is that supposed to mean, my, my Lord? He said, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I am the beginning, I am the end, I am everything that is in between. I have known you before I formed the foundation of the earth. I have loved you before I formed you in your mother womb. Kum, arise. You are my warrior. You are not their warrior. And as I stood up before him that day, my body was intact from end to end. And I said, my Lord, my Lord, I will live and die for you. He said, the harvest is plentiful. The workers are few. Be an ambassador of mine. I start jumping up and down. I am the ambassador of God. I am the ambassador of God. My life changed. Every place I went, you know, everything around me became about the living God. The God who rose again that he's not dead. The, the God that who appeared to me and touched me and changed my life. And I grew up in maturity, spiritual maturity. I came to understand that you don't have to you know, uh, to do, to walk for your salvation. You don't have to earn your salvation. Your salvation has been given to you. You can't earn it. This is given free from the heavenly throne because this is how God's love is for his children. On the other side, when I was a Muslim, I learned to be, we are the servants. We are the enslaved. Islam, enslavement or... Uh, in that place of bondage while when I became Christian it was freedom and that freedom was so powerful that I could not put name or price on it that now I felt like I can be all I want and succeed there is no walls or barrier to hold me the sky is the limit and the best part of this is I can take it to God, walk to Him, to His heavenly throne, and have my relationship with God Himself. And His Word became alive to me because I would have questions and I would open the Bible. And wherever I opened the Bible, for some reason He would answer my question through one story or another. And I knew that that Bible is real. It's alive yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and forever. I came to know what Christianity is all about, is to love your enemy. Matthew 5 and Luke 6 says, love your enemy. Pray for those who hate you and spitefully use you. The Word of God also says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and return from their wicked way, then they will hear from heaven, and then we will hear the land. Many times, many times when I get before God, I put my family before His face, saying, As you brought me to light, 
you bring them to life. The Word of God in 2 Peter says that the enemy, the God of this world has blinded them. You know that they could not see unless the gospel availed them, the gospel of Jesus Christ availed them. So I pray for my family time and time again that the true God of heaven and earth, that he will open their eyes, that they will open their inner eyes and inner ears, just like Jesus said, let those of a hearing ears hear. What did he mean? People with ears or with ears? He meant the heart, the ears of the, the spirit man. So I pray for them that God will open the eyes of their understanding, to open the ears of their understanding, that they will have dreams and visions, that while they sleep, that God will speak to them. I pray that God will put angels in their path, people in their path to speak to them, the good and pure and lovely, that God will you know, yield them to His truth. I pray many times that uh, God of heaven and earth will come and encounter them just like He encountered them. And I pray that God will send them men and women to speak to them as we do today. You know, And it is truly my hard desire not to see my family going to hell. You say, how could a man like you become from a murderer or whatever or a fighter or two like this? Only a, a true encounter with God can change you from inside out and that encounter is Jesus Christ and when he appears to you and you feel him and you touch him and you see him you could never be the same again why because he is Lord I hope I am a Palestinian girl who was born in Bethlehem. I was raised in Islam. Um, I loved Islam. I loved my Islamic people. Um, I was very, very faithful in my belief. Um, I believed in Muhammad. I believed in the value that Muhammad taught us. I believed in the Quran. Um, as a young child, I covered my head at the age of nine. Um, I believed in it. I loved it. I loved that. Um, my entire people believed the same thing. We were in unity. We believed um, in loving one another and respecting our father, um, our culture, and the Islamic belief taught women to work hard and be respectful to their fathers and to their brothers. Um, I did my five-time prayers. Um, I fasted in Ramadan. Um, I traveled to Mecca and I formed Umrah and I formed Hajj. Um, I read the Quran many, many times. Um, I looked for uh, God in the Quran and I looked for answers. And um, I found something that brought unity to my life. I, I loved Allah and I loved Islam very, very much. I was married for nine years and I loved my home and I loved my children. But there was emptiness in my heart and there is a problem that was going on also in the marriage and I ended up leaving my ex-husband. I found myself homeless on the streets because of the decision I made. And I remember uh, walking down the street of the city where um, I was and I saw a lady and she had a shop and I felt so drawn. I felt like a uh, Someone uh, have a power over me, just wanted me to go inside the store, and I did. I walked in into that store, and the moment we entered to the store, she was very loving and very cheerful, and uh, she came up to me and she hugged me. I was so puzzled. I was so uh, worried about what is this woman wanting from me? I never met her. I don't know her name. Uh, there is no connection between us at all. I don't know what this lady want from me. So I kind of was uh, uh, scared a little bit. Should I trust her? Should I talk to her? Maybe this is not a good idea. Maybe I need to leave. Uh, but again, I felt so drawn to stay. And um, I, I looked her in the face and um, I said, uh, uh, I'm here, I'm looking for a job. And she said, I know, and I want to give you one. Let's get you started working. What can you do? What kind of jobs can you do? Um, honestly, I had no skills. The only skills I had is cooking. 
So I said to her, well, I could cook for you. I could clean for you. And she said, oh, that's great. I need someone to cook for me. I need someone to clean for me. And right there on the spot, she hired me. Uh, she paid me a good wages for uh, duties that I formed in her store. We start um, having a relationship and that relationship was getting deeper and deeper. Um, there was something about that woman that uh, puzzled me. I couldn't understand why would she love me. She found out I am homeless and the minute she did, she moved me into her home. She had the three boys and her husband came and moved you know, moved me and my kids and brought us food and gave us a, a, a room in their house. And she didn't charge me rent. She didn't ask me for, you know, anything uh, to do. You know, I worked for her in the store and she helped me get a place of my own for me and my children. And um, after a while, I signed up for school and that relationship continued to grow. And I started asking the question and she started uh, answering them for me. She started telling me about her belief. And um, I right away refused. She told me she's a Christian. I said, oh, you wrong. You wrong. Muhammad is the truth. The Quran is the truth. Uh, Muhammad is the last prophet. Um, she told me God had a son. And I said, oh, no, please don't say God had a son. What is wrong with you? How God could have a son? You know, this is unbelievable. Uh, you guys are fool. You guys, our Quran says that you guys going to go to hell for your belief. Um, your belief is false. We the true religion. Uh, everybody needs to come to Islam. And everybody needs to believe in Muhammad because he's the last prophet. And besides, God couldn't have a son. This is, doesn't make sense. Um, our Quran teaches that uh, God is not a weak God. That he needs a, a son. And uh, he needs someone to help him. He could just help himself. He's already established. He's Allah. He has the last prophet. I mean, there is no other... Uh, say to say and uh, this lady said to me it's okay it's okay to believe that way but I'd like to share mine with you can I share that with you can I share my belief and I start opening up a little bit uh, with her and I said yeah you could tell me more about Jesus and she started telling me about Jesus um, and I'll go back and forth and I'll ask a question and I refuse I said to her you know this is, doesn't make sense uh, and she always left me with one sentence she always said to me it's okay if you don't believe it for i believe it's not going to change who jesus is um it just if you believe it's going to help you it's just going to make your life better i went home and i, I did my faithful five times a prayer and i read the quran and i seeked allah with all of my heart and um and um i want it i wanted to be satisfied like her but i wasn't so i was wondering what does she have that I don't? And I start saying, okay, whatever she got, I want some of it. I want some of what that woman have to come to my life because she seemed like she got it together. And it wasn't because she had money or because she had furniture. She had her faith and her faith made her very unique person and very helpful to every person that came toward her. Every person that entered her store was greeted with a smile, with a hug, with a kiss. Uh, she was a loving, kind woman, and I wanted that. I wanted to stop being bitter. I started thinking about my own feeling, and I found myself being angry with my family. I have uh, unforgiveness. I don't have really love. Uh, I really faked it, uh, because when I went home, I always cried, and I always felt lonely. And I felt unsatisfied, uh, but that woman was the opposite from me. She also went home. She also had problems, financial problem, but she always was okay with it. And she faced each day with a new challenge, but with a smile and with her faith. So um, after two years of hanging around this woman, I wanted something like that. I start asking uh, more questions and seeking uh, more ways to find out about her faith. I was hungering for a relationship with God. So I was fasting more now and a praying, um, and that is my Islamic prayer, and I start doing more rukas and more, uh, you know, beads of prayer and uh, really, really asking God to show up. You know, I want you, God, if you are the truth, why won't you come to me and show me that you are the truth? 
One day I just say that. I said, Jesus, Jesus, if you're really the son of God, come, come down and, and, and show me that you are the son of God because this is, doesn't make sense. I was in a store, just minding my own business, working uh, in the back room. And I remember saying to myself, this is just not working. You know, nothing is working right now. Uh, I, I know I'm working, I'm making money, but I'm frustrated and I'm empty and I don't know what to do next. I, I don't know where the truth is. I want to know the truth. And I remember something happening in the room where I was. And all of a sudden I look and I see a person like any other person that stands in front of me stood, but it was different from anyone I ever seen. And I looked at it and I said, who are you? And that voice of rushing water, that voice of soothing and coming in the same time, so powerful. I couldn't even describe it in words if I try. Said to me, I am Jesus. I am the son of God. And I remember being so consumed by it that I felt I didn't fall in a way that I'm hurt. I just dropped to my knees and I was looking up at him and he just so beautiful. He is so glorious. He's the light. It's like a light inside of a light and an Indian light, an Indian power. And I right away said, Lord, you are the Lord. And, and he said to me, yes, Kalida, I am Jesus. I am the one you have denied for so many years. I am the one that you said, I'm not the son of God. I am the son. I came to save you. I came to take you in my arm and make you a good person, a happy person. And uh, it's by my grace that you are saved. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to form anything. You just have to know that I love you. And I said, that, that's it? That's all you want me to do? And he said, yes, just believe in me. And within a moment, it seemed like I went to school for years and I studied all the tests and I aced them all in one day. Jesus made sense. All of those doubts that I grew up with in Islam were gone. All uh, my confusion was gone. Uh, my heart was so healed. I felt like the pain is leaving me. My heart is no longer full of hate and anger and confusion and for unforgiveness from my childhood that I carried as a young girl being a Palestinian without a land, feeling that I am a victim of every circumstances that ever happened to me. And I found myself saying to Jesus, I need you. I need you to come and help me. I need you to help me walk. I want, and I told that friend of mine, I told her, um, you know, I, I just received Jesus as my personal savior. And she looked at me and she goes, when did you do that? I said, just now. And she goes, well, I've been talking to you for years and I didn't know this is happening. And I said, well, I just had an experience in the back. And I told her what happened with me. I, I felt such a change in my heart. My heart was healed. I wasn't sad anymore. I felt like I'm strong. Now I could face life and now I could face uh, the challenge that uh, coming before me, uh, there was a freedom that I did not experience in Islam. Uh, so that's what a Christianity provided into my life. Gave me freedom and gave me love that I was waiting for for 29 years before I became a Christian. أنا اسمي محمود أنا من عائلة تربيت بعائلة مسلمة محافظة على التعاليم وبي من الصغر علمنا إنه إحنا نصلي ونأدي الفرائض الإسلامية وكان كتير يصر إنه إحنا نروح على الجامع ونصلي ويعطينا إنه نتقيد بالله نعرف الله من خلال العبادات من خلال الصلوات حتى بأيام إنه نكون وقت فريضة الصلاة نهار الجمعة كنا نطلع عليها حتى إذا ما النفس فيها أو ما ماني قادر أو ما بدي كان يفرضها علي إنه لازم تطلع لازم تتعلم لازم تكون أنت تعبد الله وتحب الله وتعرف الله لما لما أنا صرت شاب وواعي عم فكر 
وعم بدرك من كثر التعليم وانا صغير بي علمني اياها رسخت فيني وصرت تلقائيا شوف حالي عم بروح على الجامعه عم بعبد الله عم بصلي عم بادي واجبي تجاه الله وعم طيع الله صار عندي من كثر ما كان بي يحكينا انه الله لازم نطيعه ولازم نعبده هو خلقنا لحتى نعبده صار عندي حب اكثر اني اتعرف عليه اكثر لانه كنا بي علمنا انه انت لما تعبد الله ولما انت تتقيد بالفرائض اللي انت تتعلمها العبادات فانت الله بيبعد عنك ببطل اللي ما بيحطك بجهنم بصير عندك امل انه تفوت الجنه بيسر لك امورك بالدنيا بيعمل لك شغلات هيك صار عندي طموح كبير انه انا اتعرف على الله من كثر الامور اللي صارت معي انا بمشاكل الحياه التعب الامور كل هاي القصص بدي مين يوقف معي يعني تصير معجزه بحياتي صار عندي هدف كبير انه انا لازم لازم اتعرف على الله لحتى اكون انا ما عندي خوف ما عندي مشاكل ما عندي اي شيء من ناحيه تعب بهالدنيا بهالامور هيدي هيدا الشيء اللي انا كنت اطمح فيه وفكر فيه فكنت روح بدي اعبد الله وبدي اساوي ارجع فكر انه طيب انا عم بعبد الله صار لي سنه سنتين وثلاثه بعدني مثل ما انا بعد حياتي ماشيه عاديه بعدني عم تساوي ارجع اترك الصلاه ارجع يصير عندي التهي بالعالم وبهذا مع انه عندي حب كبير انه انا اتعرف على الله وعندي حب كبير اطيعه واعبده واصلي ولحتى هو يرضى عني ولحتى انا اكون اكون بالمكان بالمكان اللي كل انسان بيحبه يكون هو الجنه فكان عندي خوف كبير انه انا كيف ما ما عم بقدر وصلت لمرحله انه انه انا اروح بدي اصلي وبدي اعمل الاقي في حمل كبير علي بدي اعمل هيك وبدي اعمل هيك وهيدا حرام وهيدا حلال وبعد عن هيدا فكثير اجزاء اللي تعلمناها بالتعاليم هي الموجوده بتعاليمنا بالاسلام انه انه لازم تعبد الله لازم تقوم من الفجر لازم تصلي لازم تؤدي الزكاه لازم تصوم لازم كانت في فرائض كثير انا بحسها انه اذا بدي اروح اعملها عم بحس انه عم بروح بعملها بعملها من كل قلبي بس ما بلاقي نتيجه بحياتي بطلع برجع برجع بدي انا انه الامور المشاكل تنحل حياتي اعيش باطمئنان ما فيش خوف لاقي نفس الشيء بعدني بنفس المرحله بشبابي وصل انه انا وعيت وادركت وصار انه انا فيني اطلع وروح ويجي من بيت بيي فطلعت على بلد ثانيه لحتى انا اشتغل فيها تعرفت على شخص وهالشخص سيده اجى عم بيقول لي اجى عم بيقول لي انه انت اذا بدك تحل مشاكلك وامورك وكلها بالدنيا هون ما في غير شخص واحد بيقدر يحل لك المشاكل قلت له ايه طيب مين هو قال لي ما فيش غير المسيح المسيح هو اللي بيحل لك مشاكلك وبيعطيك الامان وبيعطيك السلام وبيعطيك المحبه وبيعطيك اللي كنت انا بالفعل دور عليهم قلت له كيف قال لي اذا بدك قلت له بس انا المسيح بعرفه وكيف كيف بده يحل لي مشاكلي انه انه الله اللي بيحل المشاكل قال لي ايه بس راح اعطيك الكتاب المقدس انا واقرا فيه وبعدين احكي معي في مجال انه تقرا فيه قلت له ايه ما في مشكله بقرا فيه بس انتم بس بالكتاب انه انتم مشركين يعني انتم بتامنوا انه هو ابن الله قال لي انت اقراه وبعدين انت اقراه وبعدين بترد علي وبتشوف النتيجه قلت له ايه مش مشكله اوكي بقرا ورحت صرت انا اقرا فيه فطلعت لقيت عم بقرا عن شخص بالفعل منه عادي منه المسيح انا بعرفه انه هو نبي بتعاليمه لقيته اعظم من النبي بيعطيك راحه بيعطيك سلام بيعطيك مكتوب عن عن محبته مكتوب انه شو بده يعطيك مكتوب مكتوب انه هو بيقدر يريحك المسيح فبالكتاب صار يشدني اكثر واكثر لحتى تمسكت انه انا اتعرف عليه اكثر واكثر من خلال الكتاب المقدس اللي هو الانجيل بلشت اقرا بالكتاب المقدس الكتاب المقدس بلشت لما اقرا فيه ذهلت كثير بالتعاليم اللي موجوده عن المسيح انه هو عم بيقول المحبه السلام سامح اللي بيعتدوا عليك عاملهم محبه صلي لاجلهم اطلب لهم الهدايه انه انا بهالشيء هيدا تعاليم وشدتني كثير لاول مره عم بسمع هيك تعاليم 
حتى انا بمفهومي بمفهومي انه انا اذا بدي ارضي الله اذا بدي ارضي الله بمفهومي انه انا كان عندي فكره انه اذا بدي ارضي الله لازم انا اروح استشهد في سبيله ولما بدي استشهد في سبيل الله بفوت انا الجنه انه هيدي اكبر شغله ميحه انه الله يعطيني الجنه من خلالها انه اروح انا استشهد فبتطلع هنيك الشهاده لما بدي استشهد انا بدي اروح اقتل اعداء الله اعداء الله طيب طلعت هون انه الله الله بالمفهوم الثاني اللي انا عم بتعرف عليه جديد وبتعاليم المسيح انه انه انت عدوك حبه طب كيف الله عم بيقول لي هون حبه وهنيك انا بمفهوم صار عندي مفهوم انه انا عم بتطلع بالفعل انه المسيح تعاليمه هي بالفعل صادقه بالفعل ليش لانه لانه فعل المحبه المحبه هي اللي بتجذب الانسان وهي اللي بتبعد التعب وبتبعد اي شيء المحبه بتقتل كل الشر اي شر بتقتله حتى المحبه بتصنع من الانسان انه يبعد عن الشر فطلعت هيك صار عندي صراع الصراع هذا صرت امشي فيه بكياني واحد بيقول لي لا انت مثل ما انت تربيت انت هيك انت مزبوط انت اللي تعلمته هيدا هو المزبوط هيدا الحقيقة هيدي حقيقة الله هون وهون عم عم بيعطيني انه بالعقل انه بالفعل التعاليم هيدي مزبوطة مية بالمية هيك لازم لازم هي المحبة لازم هي التسامح هي المغفرة هي انه انت تمشي بطريق نور كله واضح مية بالمية وبلشت الصراع هذا عندي ما عادش قدرت اتحمل صار عندي انه ما قدرت اختار طلبت من الله وصرخت له ببكاء شديد وقلت له يا رب اذا بالفعل انت اليوم عم بتطلع انه في طريق ثاني غير طريقك اللي عرفته انا اذا هالطريق هيدا بالفعل صحيح وبالفعل مزبوط عن طريق المسيح عرفني اياه انت اختار يعني انت انت وجهني انت حطني بالطريق اهديني لهالطريق هيدا لما بلشت اصرخ وصلت لمرحله انه قلت له يا رب انا بستنجد فيك أنا بستنجد فيك إذا أنت ما ما هديتني لهالطريق أنا ما راح أقدر أختار. فبعد الموضوع هيدا إنه التعاليم هيدي اللي على المسيح عرفتها وعرفت إنه هو بالفعل لازم أسلم حياتي إله. فرحت لحتى يعطيني الراحة ولحتى يعطيني الأمان ويبعد عني الخوف، رحت بالفعل بدي أحسم يعني بدي أقول إنه خلص أنا بدي أسلم حياتي للمسيح لحتى أشوف إنه بالفعل راح يعطيني هالسلام وهالمحبة وراح اتغير واصير انسان جديد فرحت في اشخاص موجودين بي بيصلوا ففت بيناتهم واجوا هن عم بيصلوا وشفتهم هن عم بيصلوا انا اجيت قلت لازم هلا هيدي الفرصه انا اصلي واطلب من الله فصليت وطلبت وطلبت المسيح لانه انا قريت بالكتاب المقدس وانا عم ببحث انه بالكتاب المقدس بيقول المسيح انا اقرا على باب قلبك إذا أحد فتح لي الباب فأنا أدخل وأجعله إنسان وأخرج الظلمة اللي فيه وأحط فيه نور وأجعله إنسان 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 يكون بمحبة أعماله يتغير يصير إنسان مش هو اللي يعمل الأعمال اللي 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 كان يعملها سابقا يعني الشر ولا هذا فبآخر شيء وأنا عم صلي رفعت يدي وطلبت قلت له يا رب بالفعل أنا أنا عرفت عنك إنك أنت المسيح، أنت بعثت المسيح كرمال أنت تخلصني، كرمال تخلصني من من هالشيء اللي أنا فيه وتقرب منك وطلبت وقلت له أنا سامحني أنا كنت إنسان خاطي، كنت إنسان بعيد عنك حسب أي تعاليم، حسب أي شيء، أنا بدي هلا تكون تكون قاعدة هلا هيدي حكي بيني وبينك خاص، بدي أنا أرتاح، بدي أحكي لك اللي بقلبي يا رب بالفعل أنا بآمن بالمسيح بآمن إنه أنت بعثت المسيح كرمال يجي ينصلب ويموت ويصير هو الفدية عنا لحتى يعطينا حياة أبدية وأنا يا رب بسلم حياتي إله بين إيديه لأنه هو السيد والرب على على حياتي وبالفعل بعد ما صليت الصلاة حسيت بشعور كتير أعطاني أعطاني سلام بعد الخوف حسيت انه انا انسان جديد حسيت انه انه ماضي كله زال كل الامور اللي انا كنت عم بفكر فيها راحت ما صار عندي مخاوف صار عندي بس هدف واحد محبه الله محبه الناس محبه الاخرين وبعد ما صارت عندي هالشعور هيدا والاحساس هيدا اللي انا عم بحكي عنه بالفعل شفت حياه جديده 
صارت عندي هي نقطة بداية جديدة بالفعل حسيت حالي إنه إنسان جديد أنا إنسان توني أنا ظاهر على الحياة لما اختبرت المسيح من كثر محبتي لازم أنا أحكي لأهلي وعرفهم على الشيء ويروح عنهم المشاكل هاي ويرتاحوا مع المسيح ويأخذوا راحة فرحت صرت عم بحكيهم لما شافوني عم بحكي على المسيح ومع انه اهلي يعني بيعرفوني انه احنا باسلام انه كيف انا عم بحكي على المسيح وكيف بحكي على تعاليم المسيح وكيف كيف المحبه وكيف الكذا يعني مختلف كليا قالوا لي لا ما بصير شو عم تحكي شو كذا الى اخره بالاخير صاروا بدهم يبهدلوني بده كذا بس رحت بيني وبين حالي صرت اقول بالفعل حاب انا يتعرف على الشيء اللي عرفته حاب حاب يعرفه بعدين اجوا صاروا يحكوا بين بعضهم انه انه هذا بكره بيو شيء اليوم بكره بصحه وبيمشي حاله بجوز فكره اجت على باله هيك او ارواح عم بتطارد وعم تحكي عم بتقيم بكره بنسى بينسى الموضوع فهون لما شافوني مضى على فتره سنه سنتين بعد سنه شافوني بعدني مصر ومأكد وعم بحكي بكثير عن المسيح وعن امور اللي صارت بحياتي والتغيير وشافوا هم في تغيير بحياتي فبلشوا هم بدهم اياني انه يعرفوني انه انا انا على خطا انا على خطا كبير فقالوا انه انت على خطا كبير شو عم تحكي انت بتحكي عن المسيح بتحكي عن الامور هيدي كلها انت على خطا كبير شو عم تعمل انت هيك لا بتكون صرت كافر انت بعدت قلت لهم لا انا اختبرت المسيح صار عندي محبه صار بالعكس كيف انا بدي اكون كافر فصاروا بدهم يبعدوا عني هالشيء بدهم حاولوا بجهدهم الكبير انه انه يبعدوا عني هالشيء ما ما يخليه يصير بحياتي ما يتابع ما قدروا حاولوا كثير بعده طرق حتى في طريق من الطرق اخر شيء وصلوا عليها انهم يقتلوني حطوا ببالهم انه بدهم يرضوا الله انه انا طلعت طلعت من المعتقد تبعي انه لازم اذا ضربناه قتلناه هيدا بلكي بيهتدي بلكي بيصير مع انه لانه من المعتقد تبعنا اللي بي بي بيطلع من الاسلام يضطهد يضرب يقتل يعني من بدل دينه فليقتل فهون اجتمعوا علي ونصبوا لي كمين ففجاه ما شفت حالي اللي عم بنضرب بعده وسائل برفش بكزمه بعصي باي في شيء حديد صار يضرب فيني فطلعت هيك هم عم بيضربوني انا بقدر استاول اي شيء واضربهم فيه بس انا كنت من جوا ما قدرت لانه انا حسيت حالي انسان ثاني صرت انا وهن عم بيضربوا فيني اقول الله يهديهم الله يسامحهم حتى وصلت لمرحله انه انا راح فقدت الوعي الوعي من الضرب واسمع كلمات انت اترك المسيح اترك المسيح لازم تترك لازم تترك انت لازم تبعد عن المسيح وهو الشيء الوحيد اللي كان يخلي عندي السلام وخلي عندي المحبه هم عم بيضربوني انه انا اختبرت وانا هم عم بيضربوني اختبرت الشيء اللي انا اعطاني يا الرب انه انا ما ما قاومتهم ما عملت شيء سامحتهم وبعد ما قمت من اثر الحادث بعد فتره رحت صرت صلي واطلب لهم اطلب لهم من الرب انه يهديهم ويعطيهم الطريق اللي انا اخذته لان هن ما بيعرفوا حسب المبادئ اللي تعلمناها وحسب الامور اللي هذا ما مش موجوده المحبه اللي هي بالمسيح I was born in a, a Muslim family. Uh, my father, mother, and sisters, and me, all of us, was Muslim and love Islam. We go to most mosque and pray, and uh, at least once a week, you no know, meeting, Islamic meeting, reading uh, Quran. At that time, I think the only and complete religion is Islam. And after that, nothing was perfect. In my opinion, in that time, Islam was perfect. Everybody knew me as a religious man. I, do, I did my best as a Muslim. Even I, uh, uh, I was ready to kill for Islam, just for Islam, for Quran. The only thing that I never think about is going to church. 
never. And accidentally, we go church just for a course for my son. When uh, we go church, the person that was there and believer that was there uh, try to speak to us about Jesus Christ after a few weeks and I laugh them and uh, tell them no. Uh, I'm, a, I'm graduated from university and uh, I, I read a lot of book. I can't believe this uh, fiction. Little by little, pastor come, came to my house and uh, because uh, my family, my church go out for dinner and we invited them as our culture. They come to, came to my house and uh, put the Bible in my house, two, two Bible. I tell to my wife, uh, he, he put this here because he want change our religion and want we become Christianity. My wife read the Bible and uh, someday I'm very angry and uh, uh, don't let her, don't let her uh, read the Bible and tell him all of them is wrong. Nothing is true. Religion, religious ca cannot be true. Uh, in the argument that uh, we have with each other, there have no results. One day I told to the friends in the church, I heard a lot of story about religious, about I, I read and hear a lot of sentences, beautiful sentences from famous person and also Jesus Christ. Never ever I have heard about this big news, this good news that Jesus Christ is as a redeemer and salvation, God in flesh. Never ever I have heard about it this big true. Of course, he, he tell a very beautiful, fantastic sentences, but no matter, the other person tell such sentences. But you told me about something that I have never heard before, and that is Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? The only things that I like, uh, I love here about that is the Holy Spirit. Because in Quran and in my reading, in my uh, experience, uh, nobody t uh, spoke about Holy Spirit to me. And then they explain me about Holy Spirit. I tell him, if the Holy Spirit, just if I can see the Holy Spirit and experience the Holy Spirit, of course I put my face in Jesus Christ. And if not, don't speak to me about Holy Spirit and tell to my wife and son, I don't let you go church. And one day I remember I want to hear the Bible when he when she, she, she was reading the, it. But at one time, one night, I tell to my wife and son, you can go to church, but I don't like come because God like love you, not me. You can go, but I, I don't come. I, I go to bed and cry. And think by myself, think, Jesus Christ, don't love me, but love my wife. I, do, I didn't sleep yet. And watch uh, the cell and uh, think about Holy Spirit. 
suddenly a fantastic, unbelievable, attractive, fantastic experience. I saw the Holy Spirit. He came and let me see him. The whole the, the spirit of Jesus Christ, the spirit of only one true God, Allah, the only one alive true God come and he come and meet which every person. Then I saw him as I promised. Of course, I put my face to Jesus Christ. After that night, the first Sunday, I go to church, but this time with a big smile and a different face. All of them find out that I put my face in Jesus Christ. After singing uh, and uh, praying, before ceremony, before the pastor starts ceremony, I go and ask him with crying. I want uh, me and I bow and tell him I want to put my face in Jesus Christ. The cry don't let me speak. He he asked me, what you want from the God, Muhammad? And an answer, but I clearly I remember. I answer him, just God himself, nothing else. Again he asked me, what you, what you want? What's your purpose? What do you want from the God? What do you like he do for you? Again I answer him, I just want himself, nothing else. Miraculous things happen in my life. You can't believe it, but these things doesn't matter. Doesn't matter in comparison with changing my heart through Jesus Christ. The most important things, the most miraculous things that happen in comparison, these things is nothing. A new heart. In this heart, in the hate, love exists. Jesus take away hate and bring for me love. I wish my brother and my sister in the other country, other Muslim country, just open the heart, open their heart, the door of heart, and let Jesus Christ, let him come, and they have nice experience, they have unbelievable experience, meeting with the only true what God, the only true life God. Nothing else, just let him, the rest, himself doing but if they don't let him come if they don't open the door he don't come by force because his love on the earth believer experience sample of heavenly heavenly father and that's holy spirit his holy spirit we experience paradise, kingdom of God, and on the earth. During the childhood, uh, the teacher t uh, teach us that uh, you can't see the God. You can't see the God. Nobody can see the God. But today, I can tell you can see the God if you let Him. I want to. Jesus was able to change my behavior, the way I communicate with people, 
the way I communicate with females and women already because this is a sensitive issue because under Islam you can't even uh, greet a woman and put your hand in her hand um, but Jesus was able to clean my heart friends and welcome to another exciting episode of Muslim Journey to Hope. I am your host Pastor Reza Safo. In this series we hear from Muslims who have found forgiveness of sins and eternal life through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am one of these believers and today you will meet another one, Mark. Mark is an Egyptian Islamic professor who taught others about Islam, but throughout his time of education he was truly a student in that he asked sincere questions. Mark is going to tell you about his journey right now. It is truly a journey to hope. I was born in the south part of Egypt uh, as a Muslim in a Muslim family and I lived as a devoted Muslim, start memorizing the Quran when I was five years old, attending Al Azhar Islamic School, Al Azhar Primary Institute, growing up as a Muslim. Uh, the name Allah is the most supreme name. My life was growing according to the principle and the teaching of these three, Allah and the Prophet and the Quran. We hear often from our teacher in the school, our Imams in the mosque, Dinak uh, in Arabic, Dinak, Dinak, Lahmak, Wudamak. Your religion, your religion is your blood and your flesh. So you're growing up, when I was growing up, Islam, it's a big and huge part of me. My blood, my flesh, my, my, flesh, my sword, uh, my idea, even my dream for the future. I went to Al-Azhar University. I started studying Islamic history and culture in the Department of Islamic History and Culture in the faculty or the School of Arabic Language and Literature. I start really questioning these viol the nature of violence in Islam, in Islamic history, in the life of the Prophet, in the life of his companions and this has led me also to go back and spend uh, much time uh, searching and understanding uh, uh, the text of the Quran the revelation of the Quran and always always every time when I go I can I come back with a great disappointment great disappointment uh, searching for love ser searching for peace Search, searching for justice, um, then I start um, discussing all these uh, issues with my professors and all with my professors. When I come and I raise a tough question to them concerning to the, the basic belief of Islam or concerning the life of the Prophet or questioning even the teaching of the Quran or the faith itself, they always come and they tell me that, that, that you command by the Quran. You can't ask questions about the basic belief of the religion. And the Quran says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, la tas'alu an ashya'in in tabdu lakum tasu'ukum. O Allah, followers, all believers, don't ask about something concern the basic belief of the religion. Because if you're going to find out the answer, you will be disappointed. That really was a horrible stuff for me. I wasn't able to accept that, to shut up my mouth and not to ask questions or not to have or to give up my basic human right, my basic right as a student, 
as, 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 as a young man came to that famous, oldest, most prestigious Islamic school on earth, Al-Azhar University, and not to have the right to ask questions. And I became a lecture assistant at my school after finishing my master's. And then after finishing my PhD in Islamic history and culture, I was continue to give that, that right that has been taken away from me when I was a student in my bachelor level. I decided to give that right to my student and to encourage them in my class to ask questions, to examine the basic belief of this religion, to examine the life of this prophet, to examine even every single principle being taught and shared in the Quran about the God of Islam, Allah. That wasn't good for me. The university and my department, they investigated this and they wasn't happy. I was kicked from the university. They fired me in that day. And the next morning, around three o'clock in the morning, my house was attacked by Egyptian secret service. I was kidnapped. They put me in a little cell in the building of the headquarters of the Egyptian secret service in the middle of Cairo. And they put me for four days, no food, no water. And they just want me just to die in that cell. And the, after four days, they start interviewing me and interrogating to me, uh, me under horrible persecution. After being jailed and uh, uh, released, after 15 days, uh, Islam has no ground anymore in my heart and in my mind. And I start working with my father in his business and uh, helping him and searching for God. Uh, the whole day, there is nothing was taking my attention but finding, finding the true God. Who is the true God can be? Questioning myself every day, every time. So the whole year searching for God, getting really a terrible headache Every, in the end of the day i go back to my bed i can't sleep a terrible headache so i start going to a pharmacy to get a headache tablets just to get that tablet just to to help me just to sleep and uh, the doctor pharmacy in that pharmacy in my neighborhood she's a christian woman her name in arabic amal means hope and uh, she been giving me that that tablets uh, uh, almost every day when i go there and then one day she asked me, I know you family, I know you are in a very, living a very prestige life and you've been a, a very educated person and the whole neighborhood knows about you and your family. What's wrong with you? Why are you taking this step? What's wrong with you? So I did really answer her question by sharing to her what was happened just quickly to her. And uh, she, she discovered now that I am not Muslim any longer and I am busy searching for God in this past year. She smiled and she said, okay, it will be easy. Don't worry, just relax. Take the tablets as every day and take this book. And before you take your tablets tonight, try to open this book and read something and see how you're going to feel. If just you feel nothing, just close it and go ahead and take your tablets. So I took the book from here, I saw the, the title of that book in the front cover, the Bible, Old and New Testament, Al-Kitab Al-Muqaddas, Bi'ahdayi Al-Qadim Al-Jadid. And I look at that book, I look at here, I said, what this woman gave it to me? That's a corrupted book. This is my, uh, my understanding through the way I grow up. And uh, I said to myself, you know what, it doesn't matter. It makes no, no, no different. How now I trust the Quran anymore that this book really was corrupted? Doesn't matter. I will take the book. I really, I am curious to see what is this book, what in this book. And this is the first time in my life I received a Bible in my hand. And I'm going to start reading in this book for the first time in my life. I took this book, I went back home. And I opened the book, I find myself start reading in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, the Sermon of the Mountain. Oh, Jesus went to the mountain, and he seated, and he opened mouths, and he started 
teaching the disciples, love your enemy, bless who curse you. And this is, was really a totally new teaching. I never, I never even experienced a single verse in the, in, in the Quran to come even closer to this biblical teaching or this teaching of Christ in Matthew 5. I continue reading the Bible in Matthew. I finished Matthew, I went to Mark, from Mark I went to Luke, from Luke I went to John, and I lost my even control over my time, or my control even over this book, or even to think, I was just all what I felt is just like a, a bird start flying on the sky, and so excited. The word, the teaching, the stories, the, the reaction of the crowd and the questions and his answers, it just took me away, far away from my room and even from my home. And I saw my brain in that evening start working like a computer hard drive. And that hard drive start bringing files from everywhere. Now I'm working with file, but the hard drive brought another file to me, like for example, as I start to see myself watching two movies next to each other, a movie of Jesus and a movie of Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam. And this was became obvious when I reached the book of John, that the Son of Man didn't come to kill or to destroy, but came to give life, and I am the way and the truth and the life. And I was shocked. I did continue reading the Bible from John to the book of Acts. And from Acts, I reached the book of Romans. And in the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul was able to brought a totally new subject to me, telling me about sin and explaining the nature of sin and explaining the struggle, the daily struggle we live between our flesh and the spirit of God within us. And he gave me the understanding, oh, how we can be delivered from the bondage of sin. How we can come out of that circle of this, the circle of temptation and sin. How we can be justified. How we can live a righteous, clean, pure, holy life. Nobody knows. How can he help himself or help herself? Now, God need to do something about that to help us. The Apostle Paul explained to me exactly the historical development of the disaster being established by sin, the sin of Adam in human history. And now he explained to me the way that God tried to fix this problem during the Old Testament. And now God, according to his purpose and his plan, he decided to come, he himself, and to set up the stage in our world and to deal with sin in a powerful way by offering himself to be a ransom and to pay the price for sin for us, to take the direction and the road of the cross and to die for us. In the end of, in the end of, in the end of the uh, of my time during this evening reading, in the end of the book of Romans, I reached the conclusion. Jesus Christ, He is the Lord. He is the God of gods, and He is the Lord of lords. And whoever going to accept and believe the work of the cross, and Jesus did that for him, and He is God. His sins will be forgiven. His life will be restored. The righteous of God will cover his life. And he going to start a new life, an eternal life as Jesus promised us. And this is where, this is where the moment, with no doubt, I was able to stand and to say, now is the moment that I find myself through the visitation of God through the way he revealed himself through his word. And now I do believe in Jesus, that he is God. And I decide to give my life to him and to follow him 
And uh, from that time, the next morning, I wake up and I walked with the Bible in my hand and the tablets, the headache tablets in the other hand. I didn't take even one. Going back to the doctor pharmacy, giving her back the tablets, saying, thank you. I find my Lord and my Savior. And from that day, I start my journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was able to change my behavior. The way I communicate with people, the way I communicate with females and women already, because this is a sensitive issue, because under Islam, you can't even uh, greet a woman and put your hand in her hand. Uh, but Jesus was able to clean my heart, especially with other people who I grow up to be taught to hate them. Like, for example, like the Jewish people. Jesus was helped me to clean my heart and to, to replace or to plant it a love in my heart toward the Jewish people, not hurt anymore. He helped me to love the historical enemies that I brought up to hate them. Jesus Christ gave me a new eyes, gave me a new heart, gave me a new mind. He helped, he helped me to understand that I am a human being, I am living under the flesh, I'm going to be in desperate need for his help and his goodness every day to lead me toward his righteousness and to live a clean and pure and a good life. Whatever I try to do by myself, whatever I try to change my life, I can't. People, they can't change their, their lives. They can't change themselves, but people, they can do one thing. They can just open their heart and just be willing to let God come, to let Jesus enter through their life and to their heart. He going to do the, un, the undescribable surgery and he will change their heart. And this is what Jesus did, did in my life. I want to thank Mark for coming on the program today. As you know, Al-Azhar University is considered the leading Islamic training school in the Sunni world. The Sheikh of Al-Azhar is known as Sheikh al-Islam. This was the environment of Islamic learning that Mark was raised in. And that brings us to the question of learning. Is learning merely being able to repeat something you are told, or is learning the ability to learn about a subject in an objective manner? to ask questions, to do research, and come to the best conclusion possible. For Mark, he tried the latter, asking questions, but it didn't go well. He was confronted by his teachers from the Quran, which he quoted in his testimony. Surah Al-Ma'idah, the fifth surah, ayah 101 and 102 state, O ye who believe, ask not questions about things which, if made plain to you, may cause you trouble. But if you ask about things when the Quran is being revealed, they will be made plain to you. Allah will forgive those, for Allah is oft forgiving, most forbearing. Some people before you did ask such questions and on that account lost their faith. To summarize, the Quran does not want you to question its teachings so you don't lose faith in Islam. In other words, Islam promotes blind faith in its religion. Mark didn't want to live by blind faith. He'd wanted a faith his heart and conscience could agree with. So he found himself on the outside of the Dar al-Islam looking in. Perhaps you are still clinging to Islam in a blind faith. Many Muslims are afraid to ask questions about their faith because Islam has instilled fear in their hearts. Dear friends, our time is nearly finished for today's program. I ask you, how can you be delivered from sin? Mark found this answer in the Bible. No one can help himself. Only God can rescue a person from his or her sins. Why not read the Bible for yourself and make an informed decision? And even read the Quran carefully to see what is it that you believe in. Mark has explained to you the way of salvation. It comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, 
and the life. He is the one who can change your heart and save your soul. It doesn't matter what your background is or where you were born. Jesus loves you. He died and rose again so that you could have eternal life. Won't you accept his free gift of salvation right now? All you need to do is pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and make me new. I believe that you are the Son of God and that you came to save me. I believe you died for my sins and that you are risen from the dead. Now I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Take control of my life and guide me in your will and your ways. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Friend, if you said this prayer with me, I'd like to welcome you to the family of God, and I'd love to hear from you. Please contact us through our website, muslimjourneytohope.com. When you log on, you'll find some wonderful materials, both in English and Arabic, which are designed to help you in this new relationship with Jesus Christ. Also, please email us with any questions or concerns you may have about what you have learned on this program. We want to help you as much as possible, so we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to join us again next time when we'll share another true story about the transforming power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Until then, may God richly bless you. In closing, let us pray for all of the Muslim nations and the Muslim people throughout the world. Father, in Jesus' name, I come before you and bring 51 Islamic nations with 1.3 billion Muslims before you. And in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Father, I pray that you open the eyes of the Muslim world, that they may see the truth, that they may realize Jesus is the only way to the Father. And Lord, I pray for everyone who saw this program, watched our program today, that you touch them with a special anointing and open their hearts that they may see the truth. In Jesus' name we pray and give you all the glory. Amen. Amen. I start to see myself watching two movies next to each other, a movie of Jesus and a movie of Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam. And this was became obvious when I reached the book of John, that the Son of Man didn't came to kill or to destroy, but came to give life. And I am the way and the truth and the life. And I was shocked. I did continue reading the Bible from John to the book of Acts. And from Acts, I reached the book of Romans. And in the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul was able to brought a totally new subject to me, telling me about sin and explaining the nature of sin and explaining the struggle, the daily struggle we live between our flesh and the spirit of God within us. And he gave me the understanding, oh, how we can be delivered from the bondage of sin, how we can come out of that circle of this, the circle of temptation and sin, how we can be justified, how we can live a righteous, clean, pure, holy life. Nobody knows how can he help himself or help, help herself. Now, God need to do something about that to help us. The Apostle Paul explained to me exactly the historical development of the disaster being established by sin, the sin of Adam, in human history. And now he explained to me 
the way that God tried to fix this problem during the Old Testament. And now God, according to his purpose and his plan, he decided to come, he himself, and to set up the stage in our world and to deal with sin in a powerful way by offering himself to be a ransom and to pay the price for sin for us, to take the direction and the road of the cross and to die for us. In the end of, in the end of, in the end of the, uh, of my time during this evening reading, in the end of the book of Romans, I reach the conclusion. Jesus Christ, he is the Lord. He is the God of gods and he is the Lord of lords. And whoever going to accept and believe the work of the cross, and Jesus did that for him, and he is God, his sins will be forgiven, his life will be restored, the righteous of God will cover his life, and he going to start a new life, an eternal life as Jesus promised us. And this is where, this is where the moment, with no doubt, I was able to stand and to say, now is the moment that I find myself through the visitation of God, through the way he revealed himself through his word. And now I do believe in Jesus, that he is God. And I decide to give my life to him and to follow him. And uh, from that time, the next morning I wake up and I walked with the Bible in my hand and the tablets, the headache tablets in the other hand, I didn't take even one. Going back to the doctor pharmacy, giving her back the tablets, saying, thank you. I find my Lord and my Savior. And from that day, I start my journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you.